Right. Now is when we separate the omegas from the epsilons. Let's talk turbulence. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and today we talk about the guts of CFD, specifically turbulence. So far we have covered the Navier-Stokes equations, the basic transport equations, we have gone over the interpolation equations, which is how we taught the computer to understand calculus, we have gone over the linear solution, which is how we solved all of that calculus using linear solutions, in a nonlinear manner, and now we are on to turbulence. The first question that a lot of people forget to ask when considering turbulence in CFD, is my simulation turbulent? Do you actually have a flow that is going fast enough to be considered turbulent? Uh, I would consider a critical Reynolds number to be around 5 times 10 to the fifth. It depends a lot on your simulation and your scenario. But critical Reynolds number of 5 times 10 to the 5th is one that I've heard quoted quite often. If you're below that, you might not actually be turbulent. And so you might actually be better turning off turbulence and having a laminar simulation. And that's important to understand because your simulation can be either all laminar or all turbulent. You can't have a combination of both. There are a few turbulence out models out there that can transition from you know, laminar to turbulent. Uh, I haven't heard much in terms of reliability about them though. One caveat to all this though is that boundary layer effects do have a laminar sublayer, and most turbulence models do actually capture that laminar sublayer. So that is included in turbulence. Where does turbulence come from? Well, imagine that you've got a slow lane and a fast lane of fluids kind of like traffic lanes on a highway. And for one reason or another, a little particle of fluid from the slow lane suddenly veers off and jumps into the fast lane. Sudden, but it's still going slow. And suddenly everything in the fast lane has to veer around and shift away, and it's a giant horrible mess. That confusion is turbulence. We get mixing eddies resulting from particles suddenly shifting positions in the flow streams. And there's a problem in CFD with modeling turbulence. We can't, at least not directly. Computers are not powerful enough to directly compute turbulent velocities. The detail that you would need would just be too fine of a mesh and too small of a time step. They literally have not built a computer powerful enough to do this on a commercial application. At least, not yet. Rather than modeling each individual microsecond of the turbulent velocities, we instead tried to gloss over it and find out what the average effect of all of that turbulence was. This averaging effect is where we get the Reynolds averaged Navier-Stokes term from. That Reynolds averaging, that's where we're saying we're averaging turbulence. That's what RANS abbreviates to, Reynolds averaged Navier-Stokes. And you can see there, so we're taking that u, which is our main flow velocity, plus the u prime, our fluctuating velocity, but we're averaging it. Think of it like the light in your household. That light bulb is being powered by the electricity in your house. Now, you know that the electricity in your house is actually fluctuating very fast, but you don't actually see it because it's fluctuating too quickly. You're only concerned with the average light output. Same thing with turbulence. We're only concerned with the average turbulent effect. That is what the RANS approach is. Now I should mention that there are other methods available, other ways of, of tackling this as well. Uh, those would be the LES and DES methods. I'm not going to talk about them here, but just be aware that they are also in use. The mainstream approach is still RANS. So we had this beautiful idea of just modeling the average effect of turbulence. Well, it still ended up with a complex problem. We didn't turn into anything simple. We in fact had to create a whole new set of transport equations for turbulence. It turns out that turbulence is something that changes in the fluid domain. It builds, it dissipates, it evolves, it shifts from one region to another. Something that we needed a transport equation to keep track of. 
In fact, in most cases, we actually need two transport equations to keep track of turbulence. Uh-oh, that means then we have more boundary conditions that we're keeping track of now. These equations for turbulent transport, where did they come from? Did we just suddenly throw some numbers on the blackboard? Well, they were more scientific than that, but they are empirical equations. We started with the equation for the kinetic energy of the fluid. That was the basis for the format of these empirical transport equations. Uh, we then added in some custom coefficients, that, and those custom coefficients were defined based upon wind tunnel tests. So the format of the equation does come from actual physics. The specifics of the equation are experimental, though. They're slightly empirical. And as a result of the fact that turbulence is somewhat of a random and, well, turbulent process, it does add some instability to the simulation, so just keep that in mind that turbulence is a part of instability in your simulation. Well, this is a case where we're talking about the guts of CFD. So to prove that we have the guts, here's an example of a turbulence equation. This is actually your classic equation. Uh, this is the K epsilon turbulence equation. You don't actually have to memorize this stuff. You don't have to... It's mostly there to say, oh, look, you've seen the K epsilon equation. It's kind of like seeing the world's biggest ball of wax. Congratulations. Moving on. K epsilon is not the only turbulence model out there. There are actually quite a few that you can pick from. You get to pick the turbulence model. And there are going to be lots of different ones that you can pick from. They're going to change depending on the situation. But some of the things I will say, don't edit the constants. All these turbulence models will have different constants associated with them. Unless you're the guy that wrote the paper to actually designing the turbulence model, you probably don't want to edit those constants. So what does it come down to then? Which turbulence model do you actually want to pick? Well, the definitive answer is going to be validation studies. You should do validation studies comparing different turbulence models for different scenarios to see which ones work best. That's the most definitive answer. But for some general information, uh, the K omega model that works very well for boundary layer flow that was developed for things like wing flow over aerofoils. It's excellent at predicting separation from aerofoils. The K epsilon model, that's excellent, excellent for internal flow. Things like pipes, that's where that is, is the strongest. But my go-to model is the K omega SST model, shear stress transport. The K omega SST, the shear stress transport model, is actually sort of a combination of the K epsilon and K omega. It uses the K epsilon model in the main domain, far away from the body, but then it shifts to using the K omega model when you're near the wall boundaries, that is near your main object. And it handles the shift between those two based upon the Y plus wall distance away from your object. So that is probably your best go-to model. I would say I use that for anywhere between 80 to 90% of all of my CFD simulations. And that is your basic introduction to turbulence. So to review things now, we've covered the Navier-Stokes equations, which are just force equals mass times acceleration. They are the Newton's laws of motion for fluids. Of course, the actual mathematics look quite a bit more complicated. The transport equations, you need to be able to recognize the convective versus diffusive terms when you're looking at the derivatives. We've gone over finite volume interpolation and you're looking at picking first versus second order interpolation schemes there. Then we have the fact of the linear solution, which is how did we trick a linear algebra solver into solving nonlinear equations? The answer was iteration. And now we've added in the whole field of turbulence. How did we solve super complex turbulence problems? By taking the average effect of the turbulence, and the basic, best thing you need to know there is your K omega shear stress transport model, that is K omega SST. That is probably your best go-to model for your starting basis. I hope this has helped you out. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.